What remains for science to do? How will it affect our lives? This is a city of the near future, planned by scientists and designers for the General Motors exhibit at the World's Fair in New York. They see a future where man will be making fuller use of the world's at present untapped resources. Improved technology will make it possible to penetrate jungles and build roads with tools so efficient that from tree cutting with a laser beam to laying road foundations will be a matter of only a few short hours with equipment like this. And from the heart of what was once tropical jungle will sprout new and glossy cities. The rise in world population will also mean that men will live in domed communities on the ice caps. In this world of tomorrow, overland communications will be vital, say the experts at the World's Fair. So super highways will cross areas which are now served only by cart tracks, and faster silent cars will travel them. One day, not so far in the future, you may go with your family for a holiday not by the sea, but under it. The experts claim that the underwater hotel is something else to look forward to. Transport. This is an underwater bubble car. And here's an underwater excavator. And man will have conquered space too. And though we may smile, at this moment there are scientists working to make these startling conceptions a reality. But is it possible to know with any certainty what's likely to happen in the more distant future? In 1945, one man with remarkable foresight published a paper suggesting the use of communication satellites on exactly the same system now being planned. Horizon filmed him at the World's Fair in New York. He's Arthur Clarke. Trying to predict the future is a discouraging and hazardous occupation because the prophet invariably falls between two stools. If his predictions sound at all reasonable, you can be quite sure that in 20 or at most 50 years, the progress of science and technology has made him seem ridiculously conservative. On the other hand, if by some miracle a prophet could describe the future exactly as it was going to take place, his predictions would sound so absurd so far-fetched that everybody would laugh him to scorn. This has proved to be true in the past, and it will undoubtedly be true, even more so, of the century to come. The only thing we can be sure of about the future is that it will be absolutely fantastic. So, if what I say now seems to you to be very reasonable, then I'll fail completely. Only if what I tell you appears absolutely unbelievable have we any chance of visualizing the future as it really will happen? Let's start by looking at the city of the future. Some people think that it, it will be like this. And they're quite right. In fact, everything you see now already exists. All the materials, all the ideas, these things could be put into practice immediately. But what about the city of the day after tomorrow, say the year 2000? I think it will be completely different. In fact, it may not even exist at all. Oh, I'm not thinking of the atom bomb and the next stone age. I'm thinking of the incredible breakthrough which has been made possible by developments in communications, particularly the transistor and above all, 
the communication satellite. These things will make possible a world in which we can be in instant contact with each other, wherever we may be, where we can contact our friends anywhere on Earth, even if we don't know their actual physical location. It will be possible in that age, perhaps only 50 years from now, for a man to conduct his business from Tahiti or Bali just as well as he could from London. In fact, if it proves worthwhile, almost any executive skill, any administrative skill, even any physical skill, could be made independent of distance. I am perfectly serious when I suggest that one day we may have brain surgeons in Edinburgh operating on patients in New Zealand. When that time comes, the whole world will have shrunk to a point, and the traditional role of the city as a meeting place for man would have ceased to make any sense. In fact, men will no longer commute, they will communicate. They won't have to travel for business anymore, they'll only travel for pleasure. I only hope that when that day comes, and when the city is abolished, the whole world isn't turned into one giant suburb. In that world of the future, we will not be the only intelligent creatures. One of the coming techniques will be what we might call bioengineering, the development of intelligent and useful servants among the other animals on this planet, particularly the great apes and in the oceans, the dolphins and whales. You know, it's a scandal of which we should be thoroughly ashamed that prehistoric man tamed all the domestic animals we have today. We haven't added one in the last 5,000 years. It's about time we did so. And with our present knowledge of animal psychology and genetics, we could certainly solve the servant problem uh, with the help of the uh, monkey kingdom. Uh, of course, eventually our super chimpanzees would start forming trade unions and we would be right back where we started. However, the most intelligent inhabitants of that future world won't be men or monkeys. They'll be machines, the remote descendants of today's computers. Now, the present-day electronic brains are complete morons, but this will not be true in another generation. They will start to think, and eventually they will completely outthink their makers. Is this depressing? I don't see why it should be. We superseded the Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal men, and we presume we're an improvement. I think we should regard it as a privilege to be stepping stones to higher things. I suspect that organic or biological evolution has about come to its end, and we're now at the beginning of inorganic or mechanical evolution, which will be thousands of times swifter. But even if the future does belong to the robots, our bodies and our brains still have immense untapped potentialities. For example, to cope with the information explosion, we may develop a machine for recording information directly onto the brain, as today we can record a symphony on tape. So we may one day be able to become instant experts, uh, learning Chinese overnight, for example. Or we may be able to recall completely memories of past events so that we seem to relive them. In fact, techniques are already known for doing this in a rather limited way at the present. Alternatively, we may prefer to totally erase past unpleasant memories. Our bodies will also be more efficient and they'll last longer. After all, it's only in this century 